Hey guys, this is Code with Vlad and in this video we are going to learn more about thunks. So at first I wanted to make a nice exercise with a sing thunks where we'll, we're getting uh, images of dogs and then we can adopt a dog. But then I realized this app is way too big and when I was testing it took me like an hour and a half <laughs> to finish it. So I think that's a bit too long. So. I decided to so I decided to simplify the um, the tutorial. So here we're not going to use async thunks, but I'm going to show you how how they work. But the most important thing I think with thunks is their ability to contact other stores. So for that example, I decided to make a library app. We will have two stores: one store for the books, and one store for the users. And basically the user should be able to borrow a book from kind of a library. So yeah, that's that's why it's called actually library app. So we have this simple app.tsx file. Let me quickly run you through the architecture. We have the hooks, which is like something that we already seen, nothing special. It allows us to get IntelliSense on our, on our store. Okay, now we have the index.ts we build the global model it will be useful for our thunks this one and and for our hooks as well because our hooks will know all the all the models all the stores we have we have two stores user model and books model and we export that and we also have two files i know i named user.store.ts honestly it's up to you but since um, it was in the folder models i thought it's logical to have dot model. So user dot model, simply an interface and, and an object um, using that interface and the books dot model, same thing, a uh, interface and an object using that interface. So when we create an app, we need to think about how the brain of that app will, will work. Here I will hard code some titles of the books, okay? And then from, uh, from this store, from the user store, I'm going to grab that book and put it here. So let's uh, let's um, let's first organize it like we like to do. So this interface will be exported, but the other interfaces don't need to be exported because they will be internal to to this model. So interface uh, books store, and we store the books, and it's an array. Right now we're going to say any, but I will go. I'm, but I'm going to specify that more, and uh, the model should extend from the books. Extends books store. I'm a bit tired, so I hope that I won't make any big mistakes. Okay, so we need to do books, which will be an array. Then I also want to provide a interface for that. I want to have a shape of that so we know what are the properties of those objects inside that array. I could put it here, but what I usually like to do is that all the interfaces that are not directly bound to the model, so that don't define directly the model, I put it somewhere else. So I would usually put, um, I would usually create a file interfaces.ts in a store. And I'm going to put it here. And export, export interface book, and the book will have an ID, which will be a number, a title, it will be a string, and I think that's it. We don't need to make it complex. It doesn't need to be complex. I just want you guys to see how that thing works. We're going to import book. Okay, we have imported book from interfaces. That's cool. And now we're done. We're done for the bookstore. Now let's go to the user model. Okay, same thing for the user model. We are going to create a state interface user state. Oops. That's how we named the, the other one. Oh, bookstore. See, I'm, I'm tired. State books state books user state and uh, inside the user state what are we going to have 
let's just have the book we are borrowing. So book, and since we have already defined the interface for books, it will be book that we get from our interfaces file. That's it, and by definition, we need to also extend extends user state. We need to provide the default value for book and it will be an empty object. And it's not happy because Okay, so here it's not happy because I'm I'm setting an empty object and it expects a book. So in that case, you can do what you can do is like do any. So it will accept either book, either any. Now it would be nice to actually introduce another function and it's the computed. So we have the state, but we can also have function that will return something from the state that will derive something from the state but that will not modify it. So it can be seen like simple getters. And instead of like polluting the state with uh, um, something like, I don't know, uh, has book, right? We can just create a function that will not create anything in the state, but can um, return something based on the state. I think it's easier to show than to explain. So without further ado, let's create a computed field. So computed, and we need to import that from easy peasy and it will just refer to this, so to this store. Oops, here we go. And now it's complaining that it does not have that, so it's normal, so we just need to input that, computed, state, and we need to return something. It will be return state. Um, we actually want to see if this object is empty or not. And one of the ways is just to say object keys state dot book length bigger than zero and this will be basically a getter that will return true if the object is not empty so we can check our state explorer and we see that it returns false but if we put something like id is equal one then it will return true Actually, I just realized that the way I put the or statement is a bit annoying because it, there's no point of having that if it can access any. So instead of doing that, we're going to, to do something different. We are going to say, oh, it can, it is optional. So the ID is optional, the title is optional. So in that case, it won't complain if we don't have them. Here we go, for some reason it, uh, it bugged a bit, but now it's working. I think it's, yeah, I think there's a problem with cache or something. So um, here we go, it works. And as we have seen, we the books is empty and has book returns false. So the has book function will be useful to, to render stuff in our React application conditionally. So if it has book, we can render a section, for instance, and show the book. Okay, that's all for now. Actually, that's not all. We also need actions and we need a thunk. So let's create that interface user actions and interface user thunks. Right, so the action will be pretty easy. So set book action this and it will receive a parameter, it will receive an argument and it will be a book. And we need to import the action from easy peasy. Same for thunk and thunk, it will be borrow book thunk thunk this. <clears throat> it will accept a payload and let's use a number. Let's use a number. So it will be the ID of the book. Okay. And then this is where it becomes interesting. First of all, let's import the func. The next argument that the func can receive is injections. Injections are basically functions that the store can call from your app, like services or whatever you want. 
you need to inject them in the model. I'm, I'm not doing that. I don't see why you, you would do that because you can, you can do that directly in the, uh, in the application. But that's a thing. So in my case, I don't use it. So undefined. And the last argument, you actually need to provide uh, a context for for the thunk. So if you want the thunk to access other other models, like for instance a book model, you need to tell to the thunk that this model exists. And we have defined that actually here in the model. So we need just so we just need to import that interface saying, oh thunk, look, actually you have a context of a model and inside you have a user model where you come from and you have a books model. So use that. Let's go back here and let's just use model and we need to import it. Hopefully it will know where from. Okay, cool, it knows. So now it's okay. And because we have put the last one here, what we can do, first of all, let's create the thong. Let's also extend the model and create that thong. So you have actions, payload, which will be a number, don't forget. And then because we have used that, what we can do is the structure some properties. So you have, so let me do that. So you have get state, get store actions and get store state. Get state allows you to get the state of this whole object. Remember that I said that actions can have access to the state because they can mutate the state. Well, a thunk can do it as well, but it will be a bit more annoying for the thunk because it will need to use that. But the thunk can have access to the current state, so it will have access to that. It can have access to the to the action of any state that has been defined here, so he can access the actions of the books and, and he can access the state of any state that has been defined here as well. So we are interested by that because we want to know what kind of books the library possesses. So we are going to use here this one. And remember, we need to pass a number, a integer. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the book in that model. And let me actually code the books. So the first book will have an ID one and it will be title of Hunger Games. I'm just choosing some titles out of out of the top of my head. So to Harry Potter and the free will be some oops and the free will be Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. Sorry, I don't have any imagination right now. I'm really tired. So we have those three books and we'll be able to pick one of those books and put it in our user model. So here we go. First of all, we need to get the state and we can do it like that, get store state, call it, and then you can define the store that interests you. In our case, it's books model and you can get the books. Then because the payload will be a number, we can find the book that we want. Book found, books find, book, book dot ID is equal to payload. So we will find the books. Now if book found, so if we if the book exists, so if you put, if you put something like ID five, it will return a false value. So if book found, then we can assign that book to our book. So we need to put the action here. We also forgot to extend it with actions. Set book action. So state and payload. Oops. That's it. And state.book is equal to payload. Here we go. And let's just put some comments. Books. Oops. Books. Actions. Thanks. 
here we go. And then if book found, what we do is actions set book and book found. Very well. So I think we got it all here. It looks it looks clear. Then let's go to the app.tsx. The first thing I would love to do is to render the book collections that we have. So the first thing is that we are going to use u store u store state store store dot books model. And from that we need the books. And we can put h4 our books. And then we can map through the books we have. Books map book book okay we have book 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 <laughs> of course we need that interpolation and it will be objects that are not valid okay something is wrong first of all let's console log the books we need to understand what's what the problem is so we have an array that's fine okay i see so it's because we have an object of course so let's do something like that let's put that in a div and we will have an id book.id and the title book.title we delete those here we go also because we use map we need to provide a key so key is equal book.id and it is happy so instead of maybe instead of using div we can use an ordered list ul so if we put that in a le and let's say that okay well, we are going to use some spans that's fine and just a bit of styling margin left uh, 20 pixel that's fine okay so I think it's um, okay right like that so we have the list of our book and then and then we'll need to have a input where we'll be able to choose the book that we want to borrow so we'll have our books and we'll have borrowed your borrowed books your borrowed book right now we can only borrow one book and this is where we need to use a user store so user store state user model and has book basically if we have a book then only we render the next section if we have a book we can render a section where we'll just say borrowed book and we'll import something okay that's fine and and what we can also say is like if not has book then we can say you have no books you have no books borrow it Here we go. So the next thing would be to, as we say, provide an input. Input. With a placeholder. Choose the ID of book to borrow. Actually, I forgot to close it. And it should be of type ID type uh, sorry number I think that's it yeah so I can only input numbers okay that's cool we also need to create a store we need to create a store for that input it becomes all messy but since the application is really really 
easy, this one. I really don't want to complicate. I don't want to have a tutorial of one hour. I think we're going to have something like that for now. So the state will be the book, book ID, set book ID, use state, it will be a number. So by definition, it will be, it will be zero. Just wondering if that will not cause any problem. I think, hmm, I'm wondering if I can do that. Value book ID and on change e set book ID e target value. Okay, it seems okay. Okay, that's fine. And um, now what we need to do is to import that action from the user store. So import that thunk, borrow book thunk. Let's import that. So use store actions, use store actions. And it's in actions, actions user model. And it's a thunk we want to import. Borrow book thunk. We'll create a handle. Handle borrow book. Actually, handle on borrow book. And on borrow book, what we need to do is to call that borrow book thunk with an ID of book ID. Right? And it expects you, I think, a number, right? So what we can do is to convert the string to number. Here we go. Okay, that does not work. So we can just parse it, parse int there. I'm sure it will be converted to a number. And we also need a submit button, button submit and on click. On click, we'll call the handle. Okay, I think we have everything in there. It should work now. So we want to borrow the second book, Harry Potter. So we press two, submit, borrowed book. Okay, and now we need to actually write the title. And the title comes from the user state and it's a book. So if we have a book, you can print the title of the book. So we want to borrow the first book, Hunger Games, the third book, Think and Grow Rich. So in that example, we have seen that um, the thong can connect to the other store and it can even call the functions from the other store. In that case, we just use the state of the other store. So now you can easily organize your application in different stores and the thongs can call between between stores to get data. So that's uh, that's uh, very cool. A usual case would be to put authentication or, or user data in a user store and then get them from another store to show models or something like that. So that's a thing. There's still one thing to show, I think, and it will be an async thunk. So it will be basically the same kind of thunk. Let's just create one um, async thunk just to show you thunk this, and it will not have any any parameters. I just want to show how it works. Thunk actions. Here we go. And uh, you would usually use something like Axios for API. So let's go ahead and install Axios. PM install Axios. Restart the application. And what we can do here is simply doing const response is equal 
func can become now a async. So async await axios method. Oh yeah, I need to import axios and it doesn't help me. So import axios from axios. And now I should be able to use method. Okay, method, it should be a get method. Um, the URL. Well, in that case, I was thinking about just getting an image of a dog. So here is um, documentation and by breed. So I will just random image here. I'll just fetch a random image of the dog. And we're not going to do anything with the response. We're just going to log it, console log response. But usually when you do stuff like that, you would want to save the results of the func in the store. And what I usually do is that I do, for instance, if response the status is equal to 100, depending on the status and the request, of course, then I do actions and I do something with that. So we're going to see it in the last tutorial where I really want to, it will take more time, it will probably take an hour, but we're going to build a whole app, a very small app, but that uses everything. And um, yeah, that's it. So let, yeah, let's uh, console log the response and we need to call that func, so it's easy. I mean, we can call that func, um, just let's call it just after we, we, uh, we handle the borrow book. So async thunk, right? Yeah. And um, we can call it afterwards. Okay. So now let's do it again and see the console log. Third book. And we have received the response from the, from the Axios call. And we have the, the link. You can check it here. We have a doc here. Okay, I hope it was clear. Um, again, I didn't want to spend too much time with the UI because otherwise the tutorial will be very long and I know that people drop and I don't want you to drop. I just want to, to be focused on the core here and the core here, understanding how thunks work and understanding the neat, cool property of thunks that they can connect to other store, get information there. They can also get the information from the current store with get get state so you could do something like uh, get state and you would have access to a book for instance if you want or has book so that's it for for this tutorial i hope uh, you liked it and see you in the next one